Now, in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul says that since there was envy, strife, and division among believers in Corinth, they were carnal and behaving like mere men and not as believers should live. So a listener in Burlington, Washington asks, what or who is a carnal Christian, and does it refer to a new believer, a slow-maturing Christian, or a backslider? Well, to tell the truth, it could refer to any one of them or all three of these, but actually none of those are the marks of a Christian that is a carnal Christian. Now, we have in the epistle First Corinthians this word, uh, Paul, in the third chapter. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Now, the carnal Christian is a babe in Christ. He doesn't understand the Word of God at all and doesn't have much of a heart for that. He says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? The very fact that you have in any Christian organization, and I don't care what organization it is, be it a church, a mission board, or a radio program, and when there's strife there, you have carnal Christians. That's the mark of carnality, the fact that they can't get along with other Christians. And the second mark here is one was saying, I'm of Paul and I'm of Apollos. They follow man rather than follow God. One of the things that we've emphasized so much in our present series on the book of Revelation is that the Lord Jesus Christ is the center of that book. And don't get your eyes fixed on anything else in the book except on him. He is the one that's promoting everything that's taking place, and he is the very center of that book of Revelation. And that is the problem that a great many Christians have today. They follow certain Christian leaders. We are living in that time right now where somebody says, I listen to so-and-so on the radio, and Somebody else says, well, I don't like him. I listen to somebody else. And somebody says, well, I don't like him either, but I listen to so-and-so. Well, when you talk like that, that's carnality because most of the men on radio are tempting to teach the Word of God the way they feel God is leading and guiding them. And that's true in the church today. Carnality manifests itself in that way. And there's several other things in this book here. And by the way, one of the evidences of their carnality was they all wanted to speak in tongues. And that just doesn't happen to be a measure of spirituality, but of carnality. And then they were having problems at the Lord's table. One was suing another at the law. And they were tempting to do things in the flesh by their own strength. And Paul said, even your giving, you would give on the same kind of basis the Lord Jesus gave. He was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might become rich. All of these things, friend, indicate carnality that's in Christians. And it determines what is a carnal Christian. And believe me, there are quite a few of them that are around today. And so I think that pretty well answers the question.